Okay, it's time to start transforming Hannah's RS5. Hannah's RS5 has came such a long way in such a short amount of time. If I'm honest, I'm surprised I fixed it in the time that I did. And although it is looking smart, it is looking nice, it is completely standard, apart from the exhaust. <laughs> But today that all changes because it's time to take this absolutely standard RS5 and change it into something special with a few, well, simple mods. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with stock cars, but it just wouldn't be my channel if I kept the car stock. <laughs> Talking on my back, try to take me down. I just want... Okay, so we've got loads of modifications to get through, and one of the things that I want to do first, which I do to all of my cars, and I'm sure Hannah will approve this, is lower it. I've just got some H&R lowering springs, which use the standard dampers. It should lower the car by around 30 to 35 mil, which should improve the look and the handling as well. So right now on the front, this is the current ride height. It's not actually too bad, but it would be a lot cleaner looking if it just sat a tiny little bit lower. And this is the ride height on the rear. It's not the highest of cars I've ever had, but these lowering springs should definitely improve the look of it. Let's get to it. So if you know A5s, then you'll know that this bolt right here is absolutely prone to seizing in. It's a steel bolt inside an aluminium sleeve. So instead we're going to undo these two bolts on the suspension arms just to save us from any potential headaches. Once they're undone and out the way, we can then undo the anti-roll bar drop link. And then finally undo the bolt which holds the damper to the bottom arm. Now there's four top mount bolts that we need to finally undo and then we can wiggle the strut and the spring out of the wheel arch. This was a bit fiddly so I did have to use spring compressors just for that extra room. And here is the difference between the old spring and the new spring. They're pretty much exactly the same height but I guess we won't know how much of a difference it'll make until we get it on the car. Then all we gotta do is put it all on and tighten it all back up. Now before I moved on to the rear, Leon from Ice Detailing turned up to do some window tints. Now I don't know anything about window tinting but it looks really difficult and time consuming so I stood back and let Liam do the work. And it's crazy how much window tints actually transform a car. Now whilst Liam was there, I grabbed some of the tint film and started to do the headlights as well. And it actually turned out really good. But then it was time to crack on with the rear suspension. <laughs> Only a small slip up, but the rear suspension shouldn't actually be too difficult. There's just two bolts on the top of the damper holding that to the chassis of the car. Then the anti-roll bar drop link to undo. Then we should be able to pull the spring off the rear axle with some help of some spring compressors as well. And here's the difference between the new spring and the old spring. Again, not a massive difference, but we'll see once it's installed. Now it's pretty difficult and a fiddly job to get the spring back to where it should go. But eventually, we did it. Yes! Then it's just a case of bolting everything back together, tighten it all back up, and the job was done. Okay, first things first, I managed to tin the front headlights with the tint film. It looks so much better, way more aggressive on the front. Yep, we'll get to the grill, I know what you're all thinking. Then, we've got the H&R lowering springs on the front and the rear. We don't know how they're gonna sit just yet until we've got the wheels on. Then we've had Liam from Ice Detailing come in and do the window tints on the front, the rear and the back as well. And not only that, also the rear lights. That is looking sick. Tell you what, it is good having some good friends. Liam has came and done the tints and also the other Liam has came and helped me do the suspension. But sometimes I think they're only my friend because 
I've got a good website that I built using Squarespace. You know what? It's all making sense now. Even in the last video when Liam got to drive his A45 against my 140i. Go! <laughs> all he kept asking about all day was, how did I build such a good website? And the simple answer to that is Squarespace, who have sponsored today's video. They do everything from websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build and run your business. Take a look at Liam's face here. This is not a disappointed face because he lost a race. This is a frustrated face because he still can't work out how I built my really good website. Well, Liam, you're in luck because look at this. Squarespace have got hundreds of templates to choose from. Once you've got your template, you can go in, edit it, drag and drop your own photos in there and drag and drop your logo in there as well. And I can even add YouTube videos as well. So this is a message to all of my friends. If you need a website, just click the link in the description box below or go to squarespace.com and then use code Matt Armstrong and you're gonna get yourself 10% off your first website or domain name. Don't say I don't ever help you out. Right, it's on to the next modification. Let's sort this area out. You guessed it, we're gonna be blacking out the front grille. It looks so out of place with all the blacked out front ends. So it's bumper off, and then there's literally around a million screws holding the grille to the bumper. Once I've undone the screws and unclipped it, I'm gonna use the de-chroming wrap to wrap around the outside of the grille. Now, ideally, I'd use one huge piece so there's no joins, but I only have the de-chroming tape. So there's gonna be joins. And then for the actual grill itself, I'm gonna take it around the back of the unit and get the rattle can out and begin to prime it. Then add a couple of layers of gloss black and then add some lacquer onto it as well. Once that was all dry and done, I could then fit the grill surround back onto the grill, then fit the grill back onto the bumper, then spend about 20 minutes bolting the grill back onto the bumper. But I can tell already that this is gonna make a huge difference. How crazy and 10 times better does that look? That looks so sick, it's so stealthy. I know it's gonna be driving a full murdered out RS5 at this rate. But it doesn't stop there, there's more. Next step are these chrome window trims. They just don't look right. We're fully stealthing the car out and that is just a distraction. So let's get de-chroming. Now this job takes a lot of patience and you've got to really take your time. First thing that I always like to do is just mask off the actual bodywork of the car. Save me running a knife into it and also the de-chroming tape which is here from Hexus, it doesn't actually stick to the masking tape so it makes it easier to push it up and around the trims. Once I've laid the de-chroming tape onto the window trim, I can then heat it up so it almost shrinks around the trim and then run a knife underneath the trim, being careful not to touch the paint. In the top half you have to be really careful not to damage the seal so don't press too hard and don't cut off too little because you can tuck this in underneath the seal as you can see here and once I've done the rear I could then move on to the door which is a little bit more difficult because you have to work your way around the wing mirror and then the huge one piece over from the back all the way to the front What a massive difference de-chroming can make to the side of the car. It looks so much more stealthier now. I am now contemplating, do I do the mirror caps? But it's so difficult to wrap mirror caps, so I think I might just leave that for now. Right, so before we put the wheels on and get the car down, check the new ride height and see what it's all looking like, we've got a load of Maxim Design goodies, which means front splitter, side skirt, rear diffuser, which should top off the car quite nicer. Let's get these open and fit them to the RS5. This is going to look sick. What a transformation this car's going under right now. So we've fitted plenty of splitters and side skirts before. You know the drill, self-tapper, line it up with the bottom of the bumper, and then we're just gonna go absolutely crazy with it. As many self-tappers as I can get in pretty much. And already I can see the transformation. Next up is a rear diffuser. This one just pretty much glues over the standard rear diffuser, but it's just a more aggressive look. After that is the little side spats from Maxton Designs. Again, lined up with a rear bumper and then absolutely sent in with the self-tappers. 
Okay, so we've got the front splitter on. That is looking nice. A nice addition to the front bumper. We've got some like rear spats here, which are on, like them as well. We've got a more aggressive rear diffuser, which the glue is setting on for that. We've got side skirt extensions to go on, but we can't put them on whilst we're on the ramp. So now is the time for the wheels to go on. And before the wheels go on, yes, I know you probably want to see new wheels, which we will maybe get to. The standard wheels sit way far in the arch, so Hannah has got a fix for that, and that are, that is, these wheel spaces. There's a link in the description for these as well. We're gonna pop these wheel spaces on, 15 mil on the front, 20 mil on the rear. We just feel that that was the best way when we had the S5. Pop them on, longer wheel nuts, lower it down, then we can jack it up and get the side skirt extensions on, and finally we can get this car outside and see how much better it's looking. Let's do it. Right, I'm not gonna show you it just yet because we need to move it forward, jack it up, and then put the little side skirt extensions on as well, and that is gonna top it off. It looks so good. Proper angry looking RS5 right now. Right, let's get it moved forward, and then it's put his side skirts on. Side skirts, same drill as the front splitter. Jack it up from the side, self tappers, line it all up, and go crazy with it. Okay, I feel like we've just sessioned a marathon of mods, but the RS5 is looking, uh, it looks absolutely unreal now. One last thing before we get the RS5 outside, we can freshen the smell of the interior up using this Cloudburst air freshener. The guys have hooked us up with these and they smell so good. This one smells like the aftershave million and just check it out. <laughs> that is sick. It smells so good. Now it's smelling as fresh as it looks. There's loads more fragrances you can choose from with Cloudburst as well. And they've given all you guys a discount code, which is MAT10. If you want to go grab one, they do smell absolutely sick. Let's get this RS5 outside, and I just want to show you how good this looks. I heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message on me, ain't no flexing on me, my attorney gon' call and collect. That is looking so sick. How, like, a few modifications, when I say a few, it was like quite some easy modifications have completely transformed Hannah's RS5. From the state it was in to now is unreal. Even the lowering springs have dropped it perfectly with these stock wheels. Yes, I know a lot of you are going to be in the comments saying you need to change the wheels, which I think we'll get onto, but that drop is now perfect. Like, there's barely any arch gap there as well. That looks sick. The grip. I think that's made the biggest difference and then obviously the tints as well the Maxton splitter on the front the sides guys everything has just came together but the worst thing is Hannah isn't here to see the full and the final reveal of a car she's gone over to ultimate stands to set up a stand and everything so if you guys were there shout out to everyone that bought some merchandise from us but she's not there at the minute so her reaction is gonna have to be filmed later on but what an absolute weapon this RS5 is looking like now even the rear, I think with the spoiler up it looks absolutely gangster, but the rear lights tinted has suited it so perfectly. Maxton Design Splitter as well, which is sort of glued on. I hope that stays on. And then the rear spats. The whole car is coming together nicely. Now Hannah actually wanted to wrap this a different colour, but now it's black. I think it looks so good. I'm almost like tempted not to wrap it, but let me know in the comment section below. Would you wrap it? And if you would, what colour would you go? I think it just looks good murdered out, but we'll see, we'll see. But guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We've got for a marathon of modifications. If you have enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.